Hi everyone, I'm on the um, Bridgewater and Taunton Canal with Sam Pitcho. A couple of days before Christmas, and we're going to try and catch a pike on the fly. I'm using um, an eight weight um, Shakespeare agility rod with a, a, an eight weight slime line. It's not really ideal, but I don't have a floating line with a shooting head for pike fishing. Um, it's normally I fish deeper water here, it's only about three, four foot deep max. Um, fly is just a home tied job made out of a Gandalf beard or something, a bit of tinsel. Um, and the trace is just a loop to loop um, American fishing wire. Keeping the leader nice and short, it's not much casting space and it's short chucks. It's ridiculously shallow. There's no weed cover, you just see the bottom from one side to the other. And there's no real marginal cover for the pike to get under. So we're gonna go for a little walk. Seen a fish, but spooked it. Just spotted another fish, but whether he spotted me, goodness knows. Well, Charlie, to be fair, spotted a fish on the far bank, um, cast to it, and it took it, well, pretty much first chuck, followed it in and engulfed it like a torpedo. Followed it really slow and then just, in, just engulfed the whole fly. Nice, nice jack. It's just, this is my first session uh, pike fishing with Charlie on the fly and it, even though I haven't hooked up yet, it's, uh, it's so much more rewarding, the effort you've got to put in to get a fish. <laughs> My silly little perch net. Um, I think Charlie uses a small net to make the pike look bigger. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> nice fish, Charlie. Top, yeah, condi gorgeous. top condition and he, I mean, I did not see that. It's almost like flats fishing for well, a predator, isn't it? You can see them. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah, watching that, see it, spotting it, stalking it, watching it take it. I don't care how small it is. It's uh, that was really exciting. That was really. To be fair, I got a buzz off that, and I, I wasn't even. Could you see it following it? Then? Yeah. I had your glasses on. Eventually, eventually, I saw it. When you said it's following, um, and then I, and then when it flared its gills to grab it. It's amazing when they make that decision to take it, isn't it? Yeah. They follow, 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 and just as you're lifting it up, he came in and just engulfed it. Yeah, he did indeed. Ah, oh, top dangling, sir. Well, that's made it worth coming out, hasn't it? Definitely. What we need now is granddad. Don't we, really? It's a wicked cliche. Just need its mother. Just mother. It's just needs mother, mate. Yeah. Oh, oh. sorry. Sorry, fish. Ah, oh, come it's all about being mobile when you're pike fishing, but especially... Uh, <laughs> My pigs are in a cut. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's all about being mobile and uh, Charlie's got one of these uh, nice, thin, foldable unhooking mats. It's just good to have a bit of fish care, even though he's making a complete meal of it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't use any of that for fish. That was dreadful fish hand, especially after my rant about how bad it was. people's fish hand. Mate, is. that was pretty. This, in, in my defence, the fish did unhook itself. I didn't actually have to even get any plies on it. It just fell out. I mean, that's the pike you want—an un self-unhooking pike. Exactly. It's obviously a beautiful hook. Right, that one very quick lift for the camera, and then I'll get back. Yeah, what are we giving it? Four and a half, five? I don't know. I'm not very up on the old. Uh, the other thing I like to do, especially on stretches like this, is get the, um, it's funny, I can't hold pike with my left hand. I can do everything with my left hand. I can't do anything with my right. I can't lift pike with my left hand, it's really strange. But yeah, what I was going to say is I like to lift up and just have a quick look for hooks in the mouth. Yeah. But yeah, it's wicked. Beautiful. It'll be interesting when I edit that to see how long that was out the water for. Yeah, not 15 minutes. No. Like the true noddy that I am, managed to catch that fish and miss a ring in my rod. Lucky I got away with that, can snap a rod back. Sam's just spotted a fish and spooked it and he's casting a line to it. I never know whether these fish will still take after they've been spooked. It's yet to happen for me, I must admit, but anything's possible. I don't know how long it takes them to calm down anyway. And also don't know how often they're fished for. 
Sorry. That's why that's swivel fishing. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Sam didn't spook it, I definitely have. Should we, should we move 30, 40 yards up? Yeah. I think we better. Another fish just spooked from the margins. So often they see you before you see them. Fish follow that until it picked up a leaf. I just saw shoulder perch just rolled about two pounds. You better hook it then. <laughs> my heart's in my it throat. Like a good car, oh yes! Oh <laughs> yeah, he came out for it. <laughs> that fish absolutely shot out for that fly. I was just getting really, really excited as a shoal of perch went past that all looked like they were a good couple of pounds. Just put a cast back out to them and then hooked this. Yeah, he's going for it, isn't he? That fish guy. It's not a perch. <laughs> Absolutely shot out. That was Did wicked. It? Did it smack it? Yeah. Awesome, mate. No bigger than the last one, but that shoulder perch that just went past me, my God, they were massive. Uh, awesome, mate. Is that on that white fly? Yeah. He's engulfed that. He has. Oh. Hey, mate. Cheers. If it was a competition, we'd say it was 2 0. But uh, Charlie was just telling me about a lovely shoal of perch that went by and next minute I know uh, there was an eruption on the water and uh, apparently this fish just shot out the reeds and nailed his fly. A nice little, nice little white fly. Seems to be doing the business this morning and he absolutely engulfed it. One day I'll learn to handle pike properly. And there's that other one crashing around anyway. No, similar size fish, isn't it? Four and a half, five? Yeah, just checking for hooks. No, Mint condition there. though. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful creatures. Hey. Fish number two. Hey. Nice one, Charlie. Thank you for coming over. That's very good of you. Oh, hey, look. That shoulder perch, though, man. That's just going to bug me. That is. They followed it in. They didn't take it. So. I guess if there's this many. Oh. Sam's very kindly let me have a go of his new Max Catch rod. It feels lush actually, it's a really good rod. Plastic wrapping on the cork. I know. Graceful behaviour. I think it feels extremely light. It does, doesn't it? I just like the fly to pulse. I think slow is the way to go to grouse. Well, the other one, I couldn't, it was, it was dragging in the box. Isn't that weird how those fish have just spooked or disappeared? Mm. Oh no, it's right behind you, it's right behind you. It's right behind you. I'll go for the brake. What pound braking no, strain you on? Do not go for the brake. What braking strain is it? No, don't, mate. I'll go and get it. What? I'll film it. Yeah. What, retrieving my body you got stuck? Yeah. yeah. Hold on, Charlie, it's moving. Look at him go. Yes. Yeah. How are you finding the rod? Yeah, good. I'm not going to dirty mine that for your fish. Mm. Well, a bit bigger, it's actually. Bigger. I mean, it won't fit in that net, will it? Will it? Hold on. He's got leeches on him. He's got what? Leeches on him. I think he was just passing through. Oh, it's barbed. Oh, 
Oh, did it? We didn't even think. Thanks for that, Sam. I wish my hands didn't get so hot because that's what makes the flash. There you go. A bit better, isn't it? It's bigger. Hello, Charlie. Cheers. Feeling a bit guilty because I've christened Sam's new rod. Really hope he gets one. That was too good a cast. Oh. I like that fly. I do think the smaller flies are much easier to cast. Maybe that light's just got too bright. Battery's running out, so I'm gonna switch it off now and just keep my fingers crossed that Sam gets into a fish today. Yes, yeah, well done. First pike on the fly. I mean, it's no monster. But things can only get better from that, can't they? That's <laughs> I mean, wicked. What was it we were saying? We need a grandmother. That's right, yeah. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, are we videoing? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> That's it, so you've got to have that on. Now Styling. that looks better, doesn't it? But do that. Yeah. And then we can get loads of hate mail for having a pike out the water for too long unnecessarily. Too long unnecessarily. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Let's slip it back. Let's slip it back. Well, that's a fuzz. Welcome to the Pike on Fly Club. <laughs> it's a buzz. <laughs> it is a buzz. Even that little one. It's a buzz. Yeah. Because it, it almost sort of stops dead. You're like, oh, yeah. I thought I snagged. But. So Sam got his first ever uh, pike on fly. I was well pleased for him and he worked blooming hard for that. So well done, mate. Great to see you. After thoughts for the session, um, well, that canal was only three or four foot deep. It was crystal clear. Spotting fish was quite crucial. I was able to do that slightly better because I had a lower tint on my polarised glasses. They weren't expensive, but the tint was something like 60%. Whereas most polarised glasses, including all those fancy brands that you see, are, are more like 85. Um, the other thing was that uh, the fish were all facing upstream. And although the canal didn't look like it was flowing, it was. And uh, the approach that I took was from behind the fish in most instances. Uh, thirdly, the, um, the, the timing. We got there crack of dawn, fished from um, first light and had the first, my, my first uh, three fish were all before 10 o'clock. Then between 10 and 2 o'clock, it was pretty much impossible to get any interest from fish at all. In fact, I don't think you did. I know Sam did hook one and, and, and it fell off. Um, and his, his fish eventually came at 3 o'clock. So, yeah, that was worth doing. Um, lastly, using the short leader and a smaller fly made life much easier for me. It meant I had spent more time with my fly in the water than Sam did. Using those big flies means that you need to have more line off the reel to get control over them. And when you've got a short distance to cast and hedgerows and houses behind you, that makes it difficult. So that's the yeah, that's my <laughs> stringer's final thoughts. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely Christmas and I'll see you next time.